Introduction to the Sri Sai Satcharita In this special new series on the Sri Sai Satcharita I will be doing a series of 53 episodes which are an additional commentary on each of the chapters of the sacred manuscript It is created with the intent of giving listeners more insights into the satcharita and deepen their reading the author hemad pant had mentioned while writing the book that he had to often stop himself from writing more leelas and details as he feared the book would have become too lengthy so i have structured and added all the additional information relevant to each of the chapters and they include historical facts references numerous small leelas and incidents that were not mentioned in the original manuscript but are vital for devotees to know i am deeply grateful that by baba's blessings this series has come together and he fulfilled my deep seated wish to do something on the sai satcharita it has been a very long and collaborative effort spanning over a year and more during the lockdown and i wish to specifically thank anand sada and trishla for their help in editing and assisting me in this enormous body of work some of the commentaries are short spanning about 10 to 15 minutes in length and for some chapters they are about an hour long i hope that this becomes a useful resource to you and helps you deepen your remembrance and devotion to baba for then it has served its purpose now we shall begin the series starting with chapter 1 chapter 1 shri sai satcharita as in the beginning of any poti dabulkar starts with the invocation of the deities and veneration of all the gods and goddesses and seeks their blessings for the success of the sacred work that he has undertaken then he describes the leela of baba grinding the wheat baba then asks the four ladies to throw the flour along the boundaries of shirdi and thus prevents the epidemic of cholera from entering the village and saves all the villagers I shall now talk about the remote village of Shirdi and the Dwarka Mai where Baba spent 60 years till he took Maha Samadhi in 1918. Shiladi or Shirdi was a small remote village. It had about 700 homes with a school and two wells. There were no roads, street lighting, or any other amenities however the villagers had jobs they were goldsmiths blacksmiths potters and farmers the dwarka mai was an old dilapidated mosque and it was the garbage dumping site for the villagers even the lizards had run away from it it was cleaned and baba resided there The floor was uneven with pits in it and it was covered with a slurry of cow dung but was very clean All the devotees congregated there for Baba's darbar and to seek his blessings Dikshit Apte and Abulkar were like-minded friends who read the Bhagavad Gita together They had a pact that If any of them met a saint like Shivaji Maharaj's guru Sant Ramdas Swami 
they would go and meet him. Dikshit was the first to go to Shirdi and from Shirdi he wrote to them about Baba's glorious divinity. Dabulkar however was wavering in his mind as he did not believe in Sadgurus. The reason being a friend of his had recently lost a son in Lonavla. After all medical remedies failed he asked his guru to sit with the child however the child passed away so dabalkar thought what is the use of having a guru if he can't save the child dikshit repeatedly asked him to go to shirdi but he made excuses however it was chandorkar who forced him to visit shirdi and thus he came to shirdi in 1910 and seeing baba his life changed forever i shall now talk a little about the significance of the quern or handmill the significance of the quern or handmill if one is born one has to perform karma which leads to a cycle of rebirth one should perform nishkam or selfless karma without looking for the fruits of the action only then can one destroy the karma beej or the seed that yields the harvest of rebirth how does one become free from the shackles of rebirth the bhakti marg is the easiest and the best path to follow this can be achieved by visualizing the quern The quern has two grinding stones. The lower is stable and is symbolic of saburi. The upper is nishta. Saburi is joyous, courageous forbearance. Baba says saburi overcomes sin, suffering, adversity and wards off disaster and drives away all fear. Nishta is unwavering faith oblivious of hunger and thirst day and night is spent in loving devotion thus the upper grinding stone is rotated with determination and concentration and the goal is achieved the wheat flour so obtained is the karma beej which is destroyed the quern will not rotate without a handle or a wooden peg the peg has to be knocked firmly into the socket or the hole of the upper grinding stone so that it does not become loose while grinding in one quern at one time there is only one peg which is fitted into the upper stone or nishta this peg guides the rotation of the stone the wooden peg represents the sadguru so one should have one sadguru sai baba who will show and guide you along the path of salvation then you will be able to pull up your sleeve and rotate the quern of nishta and saburi in that direction then the wheat of prarabdha will be ground easily and the flour will be readily available the karma beej will be destroyed and the circle of birth and death is halted then mahamari is stopped and moksha is obtained baba would often grind wheat and he would do so in the afternoon when the devotees had gone to their rooms and he was all alone Once a lady from Mumbai came and saw Baba grinding wheat. She said, "Baba, why do you grind the wheat and why do you throw it at the village boundary?" Baba said, "Akka bai and mari bai, the deities of cholera and smallpox want to enter the village. So I feed them on the other side of the village and prevent them from entering Shirdi." as they appropriated they do not enter shirdi and thus i save my devotees now i shall narrate another leela 
Leela won. In 1917, during the month of Vaishak, a doctor, his wife, and his son came to Shirdi. He hoped that Baba would drive away the evil spirit that tormented his son. In the Dwarka Mai, the doctor thought that Baba's grinding of the wheat and throwing it at the outskirts was futile and just a superstition. Baba, reading his thoughts, asked him to come at 3 p.m. Exactly at 3 p.m., he and his family went to Dwarka Mai. The doctor and his son sat massaging Baba's legs as per Baba's orders. Just then, an ugly, devilish looking lady came and grabbed his son, wanting to take him away. Baba, undaunted, gave her a blow with his satka. She fled, crying loudly. Baba then said, She came to eat your son. She was deprived of her ration. I did not throw the flower on the outskirts, as you thought it was unwanted and unnecessary. So I drove her away with my satka. Now she will not torment your son. The father and the son were filled with awe and gratitude at Baba's all pervasiveness and kindness and compassion. Then Baba gave them permission to leave the next day. This is taken from Ambrosia and Shirdi, written by Ramalinga Swami. Leela number two. Once Uddhavesh Shamdas Baba went to the Dwarkamai and found Baba grinding wheat. At that time, Baba had ground a little wheat and was about to grind some more. He went to the Sanctum Sanctorium and sat down and noted that Baba, while grinding, was singing a while, saying the Vedanta a while, then shouting abuses. He was so fascinated by the grinding that he asked Baba, Baba, why have you kept this hand mill? Why do you do the chore of grinding? Baba said, Whoever comes to me, I have to grind for them. Then he realized that Baba ground the suffering and karmas of his devotees who came to him. This sentence struck the core of his heart and he realized how much trouble and hardship Baba undergoes for us. Asanchit and Kriyaman karmas are whirling around like a wheel. Then. There are our hopes, our aspirations, goals, and trials. Only the Sadhguru shoulders our tribulations for materialistic benefits. Finally, to set us on the path of spirituality, helping us to take the first few steps like a mother caring for her child who falters and falls and every time the mother is there to lift the child up. Only the Sadhguru can liberate us from the cycle of future births and deaths. No one else can. This Leela is taken from Sai Leela magazine, Ankh 4-5, the year is 1926. Thus, I have tried to give the possible meaning of the quern or the handmill and the grinding of the wheat.